Greetings, today we're talking about the properties of groups. Uh, the basic three properties are as follows. Um, associativity, uh, inverse and identity. And for a concrete example, a very good example of group which is used probably the most in the beginning, is the most basic one to think of, although actually there's one more very similarly uh, looking but slightly different, but in this one it's probably the most general, is real number set. So let's talk about the real numbers. Star. And this special type of real numbers, it is basically all the real numbers, so um, basic real numbers, it's not really easy to write it, um, defined with the set notation, but real numbers, it basically is like real numbers except zero. And why? It's because uh, for uh, one of the uh, for one of the requirements we'll have uh, in the group that I'll now show, uh, zero would actually cause a problem. And so let's say uh, I'm talking about the group which uh, I'll call it, I'll call it um, the group of non-zero real numbers, so all real numbers except zero, and the operation, uh, the closed operation of this group will be multiplication. All right, and so with this, I'll talk about the three properties. Uh, the three properties are as follows. Uh, the first property is associativity, and what this means is group is some set uh, with a closed operation, and if the result of such operation falls again into the same set, it's a closed operation, it is enabling it to be seen as a group in case these three requirements are satisfied. So this first requirement that connects um, kind of with the operation is as follows. It says we have some three elements, let's say A1, A2, and A3, and maybe better to say A, B, C, so A, B, and C. And what it satisfies is that um, if, if I'm talking about multiplication, that what I do with any two elements I, I, I bring in is I take these two elements and I multiply them with each other. And let's say from real numbers, it can be 1.2 and 3.8. If I multiply again, it's some element of real numbers. Or uh, pi and e, multiply them again, element of real numbers. And so uh, the result will be something that is inside the real number set, inside real numbers actually, but also inside our slightly constri constricted set with um, uh, the exception of zero that we um, declared here. And the point is that this operation is applied between two elements, right? But what if we have an another element C, and it is applied in the such way that A times B, so the multiplication is the operation of this set, uh, of this group that, I'm, uh, that we've chosen. If A times B, all right, operation nicely, but then this result will be used in operation with yet a third uh, element. So is this the same like A times, and then B times C? What this means with the parentheses is first this operation is taken out, they can carry out uh, separately and then these two are done together or in an isolated manner here and uh, this is done, a number is the solution of this, result of this and then A times whatever this together uh, gives. Does it give the same result? And it does indeed because with multiplication it is known from elementary algebra that A times BC equals A uh, B times C. Right, so A, B times C is same like A times B, C. It's known from elementary algebra, and when this um, um, operation of multiplication is used, uh, the group does satisfy this. So this is the first requirement for a group. In mathematical notation, it can be written slightly differently. Uh, in mathematical notation, it will be as follows. For all A, B, and C in the group, that we're considering, let's say, group G, so without the abstract algebra and here are groups. Let's call our group, we're talking about group G. And for any three elements A, B, C, and G, uh, it, it is such that it applies that uh, A times B or A operation B, all that operation with C is gonna be the same like A uh, in operation with B where which is in operation in C. So it can be done like this, with C or just A with the other two, all right? So it does not matter if first these two are in operation together and this is all in operation with C or A is in operation with all of B and C. All right, so this is called um, associativity. Then 
we have something called identity. And identity is there are some identity element E such that, uh, and this is not the order number, this is simply some identity element denoted as some letter E. There's some identity element that whatever the, the operation is, and in this case it's nice that we've chosen multiplication, in such case it's easier to, easy to verify. There's some identity element such that for some element A, where A is inside the real numbers, um, there's some element A, and if it's multiplied by E, again, a is yielded from it. So there exists an E inside the same set, which works in the way that if it if it goes into operation with some uh, some other chosen element inside the set, it will give the same element. In mathematical notation for every A inside the group G, uh, there exists some there exists uh, E in G as well, so again, some identity element E in G exists, so that uh, A, and in this case, we're denoting operations usually with this, or star, so a small circle or a star, or even the multiplication sign. Now, multiplication is used, so let me, for this general thing, say that I consider the operation general. Now, I'm talking about a concrete case, and I'm showing that indeed this is a group. So let, let, let this be called, right? Group G is a general case, but we're talking about this group, which in general, usually the, the group of real numbers except zero is denoted as R star. Um, could also call it G, but anyway, both this example group, just like this general G that I'm talking about here in this mathematical terms, both satisfy the, the requirements. That's why it's used for illustration as follows. So the point is, for any element in the group, there exists, again, another, uh, some element, identity element E in the group, such that A with the operation applied by E is gonna still equal A, all right? In the case of multiplicative group, where the operation is multiplication, uh, the multiplicative element ends up being um, one, because one is the, one is the element, one is the number that, if you multiply any element of the group by it, it still, keeps the same, it, it still stays the same, it doesn't get changed by it. And very connected to this is the first third requirement here, and it is called the inverse. So for every A, and all right, so again, first the non-mathematical notation. So there's some A to the minus one. And if I do A in operation with A to the minus one, it will give together this identity element E we've talked about here. So, in mathematical notation, it means that uh, there exists some, uh, there exists some, for every element A in G, exists some A inverse denoted as A to the minus 1, also in G, that's very important, also in the group G, also part of the same set, all right, such that, a in operation, and again, this might be confusing, operation denoted by probably more possible signs. In this case, I choose to use the multipli multipli multiplication sign to denote this operation. A in operation with A inverse should together give the identity element E. All right, so if this is fulfilled as the first, first requirement, and we can verify all these three quickly with the real numbers except zero. It's also the reason this inverse, what is the multiplicative inverse? Well, that will always be one over that A element, all right? So that's the reason why the zero is omitted from here, why we've chosen the R star, because one over zero is not defined, and therefore um, it will not work out. So to just go over these three requirements of groups and connect them to the, to the example case of uh, real numbers except zero, we can take three elements, A, B, C, in the real numbers, take any three real numbers, and we can arrange them in such way that first A times B, with this operation of multiplication, is always the same. A times B of that times C is the same like A times B times C. So that is fulfilled, all right? Then the second thing is, if there's uh, some identity element E so that with the operation, which is multiplication, so that any element from uh, these uh, non-zero real numbers uh, multiplied by E will still be A, well, yes and namely, in the case of this group, it will be one, so the identity element will be equal to one. And is there some inverse? Well, there's always a constructible inverse, 
for uh, in the case of uh, non-zero real numbers. And how does that work? Well, we need for our operation, which is multiplication again, we need any element in the group to be multiplied by some inverse element, possibly, so that the uh, identity element is yielded. So what is needed for that? Well, in multiplication, um, it will nam namely be 1 over a. In the case of multiplicative group, here it will be 1 over a. And there always exists some number in real numbers especially. So for example, for number, for, I don't know, 3 or 5, there is inverse 1 over 3, 1 over 5, so that 3 times 1 over 3 gives um, in multiplication, the chosen operation for this group together gives one, which is the identity element again. All right. So these are in mathematical relations the three basic requirements of a group.